Hello everyone, I'm Andrea Kiocca, a researcher at the Department of Civil and Industrial Engineering of the University of Pisa. And today <laughs> I'm going to present a research project developed together with our national partner, um, Bilbrook of Technology. So the request was how to improve the uh, computational, so how to decrease the computational time for uh, you know, calculating critical brain factors. So, um, I mean, we, we know that uh, for industry especially, uh, decreasing computational time for calculating damage factors is really important. Uh, I mean, more for industry than for research, but even for research, I would say. Uh, there were already uh, been a lot of research uh, in this, uh, say, in this direction. Here I reported some. So, um, I mean, the work from Marcus Kershuti about the say how to decrease um, critical brain factor computation uh, for spectral methods and other work based on the densification of the mesh around the most damaged um, area. In this case, uh, I mean, uh, our model is based on uh, basic uh, tensorial math, so it's quite also easy to implement in different codes, I would say. I will explain uh, two parts, so two slightly different methods in this presentation. The first one uh, based, uh, but applicable to critical brain factors uh, where is needed the maximization of a parameter inside the, the, the factor or uh, when it is needed the maximization of the entire critical brain factor. So uh, starting from the first part, uh, as a background we um, Treated the load time history as a sequence of peaks and valleys. So, in case of non proportional loading, non proportional cycle counting can be applied. In this case, so the stress tensors and the, the strain tensor can be, uh, say, within this case, uh, say, as a heat loading for the heat loading condition. So, it's quite easy to uh, I mean, introduce the stress and strain ranges in this case uh, for I mean a sequence of peak and valley, for example, and uh, say on the more cycle you can graphically uh, look at the in this case the strain uh, ranges, and we can uh, I mean use the angle the omega angle in this case for uh, spanning analytically the solution over the outer circumference. So this is the idea. For this model, for this model. So, uh, as a case study, we use the Atemis security brain factor uh, mainly because we already had the routine written and we used it before. Uh, in the first part, I will present the so results for the critical brain factor where delta gamma is required, so the maximization of delta gamma is required. In this case, for maximizing delta gamma, uh, we can say use a omega angle of uh, 45 degrees, so 90 degrees on the Mohr cycle for uh, say looking for the maximum value of delta gamma. <coughs> so from a mathematical point of view, uh, so in the next two slides I will summarize the, the model that is also applied in the code. Um, especially for the case of the critical pain factor uh, we are dealing with now, um, we can obtain from, for example, finite models the strain uh, in a particular position, for example, in node, and then we have the, for example, the fully populated uh, tensor. Okay. <coughs> so from this fully populated tensor, we can uh, evaluate the eigenvalues and eigenvectors. The eigenvalues are used to calculate, the, say, the delta gamma max in this case, and the eigenvectors uh, are used uh, in this research. We used to say find the principal directions. So rotational matrix uh, is written, uh, so this is the rotational matrix to bring our initial reference frame in the, rotated, in the principal direction reference frame. At this point, a uh, rotation around the middle principal axis, so N2, is made. So graphically, this is what the model is doing. So we start from the fully populated uh, range tensor, so strain range tensor. We are, uh, I mean, going into the principal direction reference frame and then we are rotating around the middle axis of 45 degrees. Okay, the rotation is specifically made for the critical plane factor we are dealing with <coughs> right now. So we are finding the plane with the maximum delta gamma and uh, okay, from the rotation matrix we can easily calculate the angles 
to reach, let's say, from starting from the position one to reach the uh, rotation, the, the reference frame uh, in say, the beginning number three. Uh, so um, we wanted to have some results to compare, let's say, the classical uh, forehand loops waves of scanning planes and looking for critical plane factors with, with the model I'm presenting here. So we modeled, we did some theta models of three different specimens, one hourglass, one not specimen, and one web joint. We use as material S355, <coughs> same thing of the um, critical plane we use. In this case, we already have available some uh, material, elastic plastic material properties because we already used this material before for some other research. So these are the fitted element models. Uh, we um, for the hourglass and the notch specimens, we uh, loaded in pure tensile, pure torsional, or a combined tensile torsional loading. For the welded joint, uh, we loaded in bending, pure torsion, or combined bending torsional loading. Okay, these are uh, the results for the first part of the, of the slide. You can see. The result for the hourglass, for the notch specimen, for the welded joint. Uh, in the case of tensile torsion or combined loading, or for the welded joint bending torsion and combined loading. So in this case, uh, I reported the um, value of left gamma max for the analytical and the standard and the sort of forehand loop side of the scanning plane solution. Uh, so for this case, uh, I mean it's quite difficult to see here. The, the solution is exact for um, for. The, the, the critical plane we consider in this case. And from a computational time point of view, uh, here you can see in orange always the, the standard method that is I mean, it is a function of the number of scan planes we are scanning. And uh, the an analytical models, the model presenting that has no influence uh, or about the number of scan planes we are considering. So these results are for evaluating the um, Data gamma max for one node of this hourglass uh, specimen um, during, say, tensile loading. So, some uh, graphical results. Here uh, you see only for the notch specimen, so for sake of gravity, results uh, given, say, the surface, the color surface are all the, uh, say, the, the scanning planes, so all the results we, we found during the, this scanning plane iteration, while the uh, Red dot you see here is the current solution of the method we implemented. So the I say the position on the zeta axis is given by calculating the eigenvalues, and the position uh, let's say it's a three D so we are calculating three angles. So here you can see only two angles, and here there is a third one, so the half angle. Uh, so you can see that the, the position, I mean is. Uh, it's correct, and also the uh, value is correct. The problem uh, comes when we want to apply a similar method when it's required the maximization of the entire critical plane factor. Here, uh, okay, we have to face some errors in some cases. So the main problem is that when we have to um, consider, for example, different quantities. So in this case, a range tensor or a tensor. In the case of non-proportional loading, uh, we start with different initial principal directions, and this, uh, let's say, um, this means that the angle we are considering on the Morse cycle is not the same. So uh, this uh, this model is correct if we are considering only proportional loading, but it, um, there are some errors. So we are now focusing on this model to understand say, the maximum error and in which case we have the maximum error. So uh, I'll to report some preliminary results. This is the application of the model when the maximization of the entire tensile plane factor is required. In the case of proportional loading, so I will write it here, but it's for the hourglass notch and welded joint in case of tensile loading and bending loading. In this case, uh, as you can see, both the value and the position of the of the, um, critical, the maximum value of the critical pain factor is, is found. The problem, as I said, is in the case of non-proportional loading. So in this case, here I have to put some opacity on the surface because the point went downside the surface. 
we always found uh, some errors because of the problem I said before. So if the principal directions of the range tensor and the tensor are different from the beginning. So we are not, let's say, maximizing over the same uh, angle, I would say. So it's a maximum problem. We are trying to also look up for a closed form solution when we are proportional loading. And yeah, at the moment we are working on that. So to conclude, I presented uh, an analytical model based on tensorial math that can be easily applicable to uh, standard codes like MATLAB, Python, or Shilab. And uh, I mean, the results are analytically correct for the case uh, of critical plane factors where you need to uh, maximize a parameter inside the critical plane factors. We try to apply a similar method to uh, say the maximization of the entire critical plane parameter, but in this case, uh, we found problems when the non proportional loading is applied for the component. So, with this, I finish my presentation. I thank you, and so questions and comments are welcome. Thank you very much. Yes. yes, we have time for, for some. Questions? Yes, yes. Uh, look, let me see if I got it right. Yeah. Assume you have a no proportional loading, you want to maximize just a simpler case that you you said simpler to work with, you, you want to maximize just shear stress amplitude or the okay. shear strain. If you are in an elastic case, they are the same, okay? Yeah. And then you, you have a complicated path and you project it into the plane. You have the shear stress vector describing a history. Yeah. Um, so how you do it? Yeah, that's, that's another problem we are facing. So at the moment, as I said before here, to apply these methods, uh, the big simplification is to consider the load time history as a sequence of peak and valley. So I need always to have at least a peak and valley where I should calculate, for example, from Finitan model, the value of stress and strain. So this is, let's say, a strong hypothesis of the model, for sure. And yeah, it's something we, we are trying to work on. Okay, you can have it discrete with peak and valleys, but when you, if you project, you have a path yeah. of the shear stress vector, you need to go through the planes and measure it. Yeah. There is no way to, yeah. to cut out. That's yeah, true. But, that, that, that means you need to search for the planes. Yeah, exactly. So in this case, it's not applicable to this method. Mm -hmm. I mean, every time you are forced to, even some, for example, some non proportional cycle counting methods use this thing to count the cycle. So in this case, yes. these are not usable for this method because the hypothesis is that it's so analytical, and so I'm bringing with me some hypothesis of the analytical model. Okay. Yeah, this is correct. Thank you. Uh, sorry, what about the residual stress? The residual stress, yeah. So, uh, let's say that this model was used to <coughs> calculate residual stresses during welding. And uh, I'm not, uh, I mean, I already considered the S, uh, sorry, the, the reef specimen in this case, so no residual stresses. But we still didn't uh, try to, say, apply the initial state of stress. Yeah and then to, to calculate it, but this is a really good point, and yeah. for sure we, we are going to do it. So yeah. how, how did you model this in, after your new micro simulation, the best best joint? How did I model the best joint? Yeah, two, two together. Did you consider as a tie or something, or then, or your not to know the... Sorry, how did the, how did the thin time model, yeah, this, yeah. this one? Yeah, they're not that good, right? It's all, let's say, one piece. This is not a fully penetration welding, so there, is, there are two toes and one root in this okay. case. And the critical position, I mean, the critical nodes are always in the root in this case, yeah. And you detect that? And we, I mean, yeah, we, we did the sub-modeling, yeah. and then we uh, evaluate all the, the nodes, let's say, in the, not all the nodes, but all the nodes in the notches, let's okay. say. And then we, yeah, we found the critical nodes. So. The, the nodes with critical uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so thank you very much again.